Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. I see that there are folks that are still logging in, but um, for those who of you who are here, I want to bring attention to in our handouts tab within GoToWebinar, you will find a copy of this presentation as well as a copy of the IC Part B student compliance monitoring tool that we will be reviewing this morning. Um, this information may have been sent to you, um, for those of you who registered early on um, uh, last week, for if you wanted to pull out, have that on another screen or have that printed out for you, um, that is the tool that we will be reviewing this morning. We will go ahead and get started with our presentation and I'll share with you the agenda. Um, We'll start with introductions. My name is Tiffany Ingram. I am a program analyst here at ASI on the IDA monitoring team. Um, and we also have Karen on the call if you'd like to introduce yourself. Okay, I know Karen had some um, things going on with her sound earlier today, but um, she is the manager over at the IDA um, compliance um, and monitoring team here at ASI in the K-12 division. And we are thankful for you all joining us today to go through this tool. So our agenda for today will go through an overview um, of IDA monitoring on a larger scale. We'll also talk about some pre-monitoring activities that you will go through with your LEA and your lead monitor. Um, we will get into um, detail kind of in different buckets around the compliance monitoring tool and what um, our IC monitors will be looking for when reviewing your student records. We'll also close out our presentation around the risk-based monitoring reports and what you can expect after your desktop monitoring is complete and as well as any corrections of non-compliance that may be flagged for your LEA, how to correct those in detail. So with our introduction, as the state education agency, the SEA for the District of Columbia, ASI has the statutory authority under both federal and local law to establish, operate, and maintain an administrative process to ensure compliance with all federal statutes for programs under its jurisdiction. This includes um, the education of district children and youth with disabilities. The IDA section 616 requires each state education agency to implement a general supervision system that monitors the implementation of IDA Part B and its accompanying regulations. Therefore, ASI is responsible for the implementation of that general supervision system for District of Columbia, which includes, but is not limited to state complaint processes due process complaints, adjudication, in addition to LEA monitoring. So a little bit more about IDA monitoring and review of some of the work we'll do. Today, we're talking about risk-based monitoring. However, ASI employs a variety of monitoring activities throughout the year to ensure compliance with federal and local regulations to improve education results and functional outcomes for students with disabilities. Monitoring activities may include, but are not limited to the following, database reviews, on-site compliance monitoring, record reviews, on-site focus monitoring, dispute resolution activities, phase one and phase two grant applications and audit finding reviews. This tool is used as a part of on-site and desktop file reviews for both local education agencies and non-public schools that educate district students. So to share a little bit more about the process and the pre-monitoring activities that your LEA will undergo, um, this slide outlines the timeline and the action steps for the LEA. 
ASI will provide the USI numbers of students whose files will be reviewed via Box. And Box is a secure online file sharing platform and you'll be provided additional information about accessing Box from your lead monitor if you have not already received that information. With Box, you will be asked to upload all records that are not in SEDS, and we will be looking for um, attendance and discipline records through this platform only. We ask that you please refrain from sending any student information via email. We're using Box as that is a secure platform to share um, student information. Four weeks prior to the desktop review, ASI will provide, again, your LEA with a list of students whose records will be reviewed. It is a responsibility of the LEA to provide ASI with class schedules, attendance records, and discipline records for each student. ASI will use the student's records in SEDS, as well as the student's attendance and discipline records to make a determination of compliance on each item. ASI will not consider items contained in a student's hard copy file to make a compliance determination. ASI reserves the right to review additional student files if the LEA has not demonstrated 100% compliance on APR indicators 4B, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, or 15, or if a complaint has been filed against the LEA in the year prior to the visit. This slide reviews um, our file selection process for, e for LEAs and our pre-monitoring activities listing out the total numbers of students in your um, LEA with IEPs and what, how many files that OSSI will review. Um, if possible, OSSI will select files with a diversity of values for the following criteria, including grade level, um, type of most recent evaluation, placement, local or non-public, transfer status, um, and attending campus. Students will be selected for review will be uploaded into your LEA's box file um, four weeks before your a desktop review. We will now transition into reviewing the IDEA Part B Student Compliance Monitoring Tool. And again, this document was emailed to you prior to the presentation, but it can also be found in the handouts tab of this webinar under the GoToWebinar tab here. Um, and you will see it as a PDF that you can download. I'll be referring to this resource throughout the next 11 slides. Um, feel free to have this copy, a copy of this document handy so you can reference it through the presentation. Um, please note that we will skip certain indicators. Uh, this is because we are only reviewing indicators that pertain to the IDA program monitoring team as opposed to non-public or correctional facility monitoring. Uh, we may also review indicators non-consecutively. We may skip around a bit, so just um, please be sure to make sure you can follow along with your um, tool downloaded on your computer or uh, if you had the opportunity to print it out beforehand. The next section of the presentation will review student level tool, subject, item, and category for LEAs to understand what monitors are looking for um, when reviewing student files and what documentation is required to determine to be compliant. Um, if you have the monitoring tool um, open, you'll notice on page two um, that indicators are listed and categorized here. And you'll also notice um, that some of the indicators may only apply to a certain type of monitoring that's being done. Um, such as IDA program, IDA non-public, or IDA co correctional facilities. This year, in an effort to streamline OSSI monitoring activities, OSSI has aligned this monitoring tool for all three activities. 
And please note, in this presentation, we may not review each indicator in chronological order. Starting off in the area of initial evaluation, this pertains to, um, if you have their tool open, indicators 12 through 14. In this area, I see monitors will review the student's document files to ensure signed copies, procedural safeguards, and to ensure um, a signed consent from the parent was uploaded into the student's record. Remember, when uploading items under miscellaneous cover sheets, that you must be sure to be descriptive when naming the file uploaded to ensure it will be located. So I know often it may just say image 001 or something like that when you upload um, into uh, SEDS. You wanna make sure that if it is a consent that you're naming um, the student's name and parent consent or name and procedural safeguards. So um, as I see monitors, we won't miss that information if it is named appropriately, the files are named appropriately, other than just random um, titles of the update, the uh, items you are uploading. We want to make sure that we can locate all documents that your LEA has for that student. And the documents have in the student's file in SEDS, we will be reviewing um, a D form analysis of existing data. We'll be looking at um, the evaluation summary, the student's eligibility termination, and or any meeting notes in the student's file to determine what data sources were used for the student's eligibility determination. And of course, lastly, we will be reviewing eligibility timeliness to ensure determinations were timely made 60 days after consent. And um, at, throughout this presentation, if you do have questions, feel free to put them in the chat. We will get to questions at the um, conclusion of the presentation. In the area of reevaluation, which connects to indicators 12 and 15 through 17, I see monitors will review the student's document file, again, looking for procedural safeguards and to ensure consent from to evaluate what's uploaded from the parent. Um, I have to, again, express making sure if you're uploading items under miscellaneous cover sheet that you are um, using a descriptive name when uh, uploading the file to ensure we can locate it. Um, we will also be looking in the student's file um, and sets to look for the student's AED evaluation summary, um, eligibility determination, and or meeting notes to review the determined um, data sources that were used to determine the student's eligibility. And lastly, we will also be reviewing eligibility timeliness to ensure determinations were made before the current eligibility expiration date for the student. We're now transitioning into the section where we are reviewing student um, IEPs, which will be uh, connected to several indicators. Um, for this, indicators 35 through 36 focuses on initial eligibility compliance. And, and for this indicator, I see monitors will review the student's um, document file for initial eligibility. Uh, monitors will look for finalized IEP and documentation of the related service delivery in form of service trackers to ensure they are uploaded into the student sets file. It is the responsibility of the LEA to work collaboratively with related service providers to ensure related services are delivered in alignment with the student's IEP and services are documented within the student's SEDS file. Um, for additional information on this indicator, um, that is going to be on pages 20 and 21 in our tool. If you have um, additional questions or want to review what is required for this indicator, these two indicators. Keeping with the theme of a student's IEP, 
um, indicators 35 and 36 with the implementation of related services. IC monitors will review the implementation of related services during the specified review period as shared in your pre-site conference call. Um, so you will have a pre-site conference call with your lead monitor um, and they will explain to you what your specified review period is. Um, but in this, for this indicator, we will be looking um, in the student SEDS file to ensure service trackers are uploaded. IC monitors will review only the service trackers that are uploaded or generated into SEDS as evidence of service implementation for students. Keeping with the theme of IEP um, focus, uh, indicators 18 through 20 focuses on IEP team participation. And for these indicators, I see monitors will review the student's record for both letters of invitation and the IEP meeting participation. LEAs must ensure that letters of invitation are generated at least one day before the student's IEP meeting complete IEP team members must be present. LEAs must ensure LOIs are generated timely and the IEP signature pages are uploaded into the student sets records. We know many of you are using e-signatures at this time and we are just looking for that document to be uploaded with the signatures of all IEP team members. Um, if you have additional questions around this um, indicator in the tool, page eight will um, outline more of the requirements for IEP team meeting participation in those requirements. Indicators 21 through 23 focuses on the student's IEP and the student's present levels of performance. For these indicators, IC monitors will review the student's present levels of performance to ensure it includes information about the student's academic and functional performance and how the student's disability affects their participation in the general education curriculum and activities. So more detailed information on indicators 21 through 23 can also be found in the IDA tool on pages 9 through 12. Continuing into in the theme of IEP, um, indicators 24 through 27 focuses on the student's annual goals and progress monitoring. In this area, IC monitors will review the student's annual goals and progress monitoring measures. Monitors will review the student's IEP to ensure it includes updated IEP goals that are measurable and goals must have current dates within the last calendar year. And monitors will also review the student's record to ensure current progress reports are uploaded. More detailed information on indicators 24 through 27 can be found on pages 12 and 13 on the IDEA tool. Additionally, with the students' IEPs, there are additional IEP items that will be reviewed for um, each student selected for review and in indicators 30 through 34 um, talk about the additional IDA, I'm sorry, the additional IEP items for the student's record that will be reviewed. The first is uh, monitors will look for um, the students in the student's document tab to identify if the student has a current ESY determination. Um, not only are we looking for that checked yes or no on the student's IEP, we are also um, looking that the record must include a completed ESY worksheet that is uploaded into the student SEDS record. For those LEAs who have, may have adult students, the IC monitor will review the student's record to determine if transfer of rights documentation has been uploaded. And lastly, for students eligible for the ALT assessment, 
OSI monitors will review the documentation uploaded into the SEDS record for eligibility um, determination in that area. And if a student is eligible for the ALT assessment, the OSI monitor will review the student's IEP to ensure that it contains a description of benchmarks or short-term objectives. More detailed information on indicators 30 through 34 of the IDA tool can be found on pages 17 through 19. The next focus of monitoring will be around the least restrictive environment. And um, this sec section of the tool correlates to indicators 40 through 42, um, where ASI monitors will review the student's LRE determination within the student's IEP. And ASI monitors will review um, additional IEP items within the student's records. We will also review the most recent IEP to ensure there is alignment between, alignment between the student's IEP goals, present levels of performance, specialized instruction hours, the student's placement to in, include the least, least restrictive environment. The ASI monitor will also review the supplemental aids and services section of the student's IEP to determine what supports were considered for the student. Additional information about these indicators can be found on pages 24 through 26 in the tool. Lastly, we will discuss the last um, section of the tool, which is around discipline, and that correlates to indicators 43 through 45. And in this final section, and the OSI monitor will review discipline records that are provided by the LEA within BOX. If a student was removed for 10 or more days, the OSI monitor will review the student's record in SEDS to determine if the student had a manifestation determination review meeting. And we will also review documentation in the file to ensure that the parent was informed of the disciplinary action that resulted in the change of placement. And lastly, that parents were provided procedural safeguards for, for that incident. So this concludes our review of the tool, a high level overview of the tool and what indicators are included, as well as what IC monitors will be looking for um, when completing your um, a desktop student review. We will now transition into um, risk-based monitoring reports and talking about what happens after your desktop review is complete. And LEAs will receive a monitoring report of their findings of their desktop review. Many of you on this call is very, 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 very familiar with our system, DC CATS. And um, this, is, this will be the location where um, your LEA will receive their findings in, in DC CATS. Of course, if you have any questions and how to find this report and says once it is released, please feel free to reach out to your IDA monitor for your LEA. A little bit more about the reports that you'll see. This slide provides an overview of the timeline for initial and final findings reports issued by OSI. First, OSI releases its initial findings report in DC CAT. This report provides LEAs with all proposed findings of noncompliance. LEAs have 30 days to verify its data and or make an appeal for proposed findings. At the end of the 30 days, OSI monitors review any evidence that LEAs have uploaded into DC CAT. If the evidence demonstrates that the LEA was not in fact non-compliant, then a finding will not be issued. All other proposed findings will then become findings. This begins the 365 day timeline. Once findings are issued, LEAs are required to correct identified non-compliance 
and we will discuss what those correction steps are in the next section. Within 70 days of the desktop review being completed by ASI, LEAs will receive their preliminary monitoring report. This year, LEAs will have 30 days um, for that monitoring report window. And of course, as we have stated in the previous slide, the LEAs will have up to 30 calendar days to see clarification about the report, appeal any findings, and provide addition, additional information to ASI as needed. Please use your 30 days wisely as this is your time to ask any questions or provide any additional information to ASI as needed. We understand that a student's file is a living document. It may change over time. If you do have the additional information to provide ASI during this window, please make sure that it is updated, uploaded into SEDS and your LEA monitor is notified. Please note, once the 30-day correction window is closed, LEAs cannot revisit findings or submit appeals to ASI. In this section, we will discuss how to correct areas of non-compliance that are flagged on your report. In exercising its monitoring responsibilities, the state education agency must ensure that when it identifies non-compliance with the requirements of IDA Part B, the non-compliance is corrected as soon as possible, but in no case no later than one year after the identification of the non-compliance. ASI uses a two-prong approach when verifying the correction of non-compliance. In prong one, the LEA corrects individual student-level non-compliance. Action step for the LEA is that LEAs will upload necessary documentation into the non-compliance report in DC CATS to demonstrate that the student level non-compliance has been corrected. For prong two, the LEA demonstrates that it is now correctly implementing the specific regulatory requirements. So the action, the action step for LEAs would be to identify student files and entering the student's name and USI information into the prong to report in DC CATS. As previously discussed, at the end of the 30 days, IC monitors will review any evidence that LEAs have uploaded into DC CATS. If the evidence demonstrates that the LEA was not in fact non-compliant, then a finding will not be issued and all other proposed findings will then become findings. And that will begin the 365 day timeline. Once findings are issued, LEAs have 90 days to complete prong one in DC CATS. Once prong one is complete, the prong two report is populated in DC CATS. Once the prong two report is populated, LEAs have 30 days to engage in the prong two process. Prong one and prong two must both be completed within the 365 day timeline. Once your LEA completes prong one in DC CATS, your LEA's prong two report will open and populate the number of files you need to submit. This chart provides the breakdown for how many files are required per number of files flagged for non-compliance. And lastly, closing out, closing findings of non-compliance, LEAs 
will be notified in writing through DC CATS once a finding of non-compliance is closed. LEAs are encouraged to review their said student records on an ongoing basis to ensure records are up to date. Any long-standing non-compliance beyond the one-year correction period will result in additional enforcement actions by OSI and will affect your LEA's annual determinations. So I do want to open the floor now for any questions that um, you may have. Feel free to use the um, chat box to ask any questions that you may have about the information presented today um, in regards to what may be upcoming for your LEA in this monitoring cycle. Again, if you have any questions about the presentation or any questions about what may be upcoming for your LEA in terms of monitoring, um, feel free to let us know in the chat any questions you may have. In addition, um, this presentation is in our handouts file here on GoToWebinar as well, as well as a copy of the tool for you to download. Please let me know if you're having any issues in downloading that from um, GoToWebinar here. We'll make sure you get that information so that you can review it if you have any additional questions. Karen, I, I'm not seeing any questions. Are you seeing any? I want to make sure I'm not missing anyone. Hi, Tiffany. Um, we have a couple individual questions um, that I've been monitoring, but I think I don't see any um, questions from the group. So I think we're good. Okay, perfect. Um, we do want to share with you the contact information for Karen. Um, if you have any additional questions about the presentation or the monitoring tool, we thank you so much for joining us this morning. And um, we hope that you found this information helpful to prepare you for your um, desktop monitoring um, this season. Thank you so much for joining us. Karen, do you have any parting thoughts? I do not. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. Sorry, I was having some technical difficulties at the beginning of the presentation. Um, but thank you for joining us. Um, and thank you, Tiffany. All right. Thank you so much for everyone. Um, Sharing your morning with us. Have a great rest of your day.